Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you so much for being here. I am still in Canada at my parents' house visiting where I grew up, so that has been really great. But I love that I can do this on the road. So I am so happy to be back watching my crew in the Enterprise. We are officially on season six, which is crazy. As always, we had a vote on Patreon of the episodes I would watch. And this was our winner, I'm pretty sure, out of all of them, and it's episode four, Relics. So I'm also watching a couple two-parters, Chain of Command, so that only counts as one episode, so it's a bonus, as well as the two-part season finale, and a few others, which I'm excited about. I feel like I kind of heard maybe it goes downhill after season five, but then a resounding, after I said that, a resounding comment section of, no way there's some amazing episodes in season six so that is exciting for me it's been a while since i've watched any episodes and so i'm excited to get back into it i can't believe we're at the second to last season in the movies then the chris pine movies but here we go oh it's off i'm gonna go get someone to kill that then get started Identified the signal. It is from the USS Janola Federation transport ship reported missing in this sector 75 years ago. Take us out of war, Benson. All stop. Aye, uh, sir. Oh, oh, I don't know her. Let's do another time travel episode. There are no stars or other stellar bodies listed on our navigational chart. However, sensors indicate the presence of an extremely strong gravitational source. Can you localize the source of the gravitational field? Sensors? That's no moon. The object's enormous mass is causing a great deal of gravimetric interference that might have prevented our sensors from detecting it before we dropped out of warp. Could this be a Dyson sphere? The object does fit the general parameters of Dyson's theory. It's a very old theory, number one. I'm not surprised that you haven't heard of it. Freeman Dyson postulated the theory that an enormous hollow sphere could be constructed around a star. This would have the advantage of harnessing all the radiant energy of that star. And any population living on the interior surface would have virtually inexhaustible sources of power. The interior surface area of a sphere this size is the equivalent of more than 250 million Class M planets. What? Put us into synchronous orbit above that position. I see. Graphics look pretty good there. Okay, Dyson Sphere. 20th century physicist. And then he invented the Dyson vacuum. Just kidding, but that's probably what the Dyson ball on those vacuums is named for? There are no life signs. However, there are several small power emanations and life support is still functioning on minimal levels. Jordy, join us in transporter room three. Mr. Worf. Life support is barely operating. See if you can increase the oxygen level. Aye, sir. The transporter is still online. It's being fed power from the auxiliary systems. The rematerialization subroutine has been disabled. Phase inducers are connected to the emitter array. The override is completely gone, and pattern buffer has been locked into a continuous diagnostic cycle. This doesn't make any sense. Locking the unit into a diagnostic mode just sends the matter array through a pattern buffer. Why would anyone There's want a pattern to... in the buffer still. There's less than 0.003% signal degradation. How is that possible? Never Never seen a transporter jury rigged like this before. Could sure, someone survive rigged. inside a transporter buffer for 75 years? I know a way to find out. Are they saying, like, when they're beamed, they just are stuck in mid beam for 75 years? Was that who I thought it was? Why did my tears come to my eyes when I saw it? <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Scotty? Scotty's been lost for 75 years in a buffer? That was Scotty. Oh, he's so cute. I could die. I did not expect my emotions to react like that. <laughs> it's like a crossover episode. They're just... Thank you, lad. We gotta get Franklin out of there. Someone else's pattern is still in the buffer? Hi, Matt Franklin. We went in together. One of the inducers has failed. Uh, Boost the gain on the latter stream. Do they even know where that is? His pattern's degraded 53%. He's gone. He was a good lad. I'm Commander William Reich, Starship Enterprise. Lieutenant Commander George LaForge. The Enterprise? I bet Jim Kirk himself hauled the old gal out of mothballs to come looking for me. How long have I been missing? I have restored life support. Captain Scott, Lieutenant Worf. Lieutenant? Uh, Captain, perhaps there are a few things we should talk about. 
Relics. He's a relic? You were saying it's as big as life. You mean the Dyson Sphere. Aye. Can you imagine the engineering skills needed to even design such a structure? We began our standard survey of the surface. Oh, my heart is fluttering. The ship got caught in the sphere's gravity well, and down we went. Franklin and I were the only ones to survive the crash. I'll say this about your enterprise. The doctors are a fair sight for you. <laughs> I'm Jean-Luc Picard. Welcome aboard the Enterprise, Captain Scott. Call me Scotty. Other than a few bumps and bruises, I'd say you feel fine for a man of 147. And I don't feel a day over 120. Well, I would very much enjoy the opportunity of hearing you talk about your career. I'm sure me you would too. have some fascinating insights. I need to get down to engineering and begin that analysis. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> now, this has been a shock to your system, and I want you to not push yourself. We're pretty busy down there anyway, Captain Scott. I'll find someone to show you your quarters. Hi. They don't know how brilliant he is, even. Everything a man wants right at his fingertips. Of course, in the first visit, I got into a wee bit of trouble. Excuse me, sir, but I have to return to duty. Well, then. Thank rude. you. Rude. Not rude, but come on. He hasn't talked to someone in 80 years. I'll listen to your stories. Captain Scott, this really is We're in engineering. Call me Scotty. This really isn't a good time for a tour. We're running a phase seven survey of the Dyson Sphere. I'm here to help. I'm sure we can handle it. I was a Starfleet engineer for 52 years. 52 years, Jordy. You're right. We'd be grateful for any help you could give us. Good. Sensors indicate the presence of a G-type star at the center of the sphere. I don't want them to condescend him just because he's been out of, you know. Mr. Data, send out a series of class four probes to survey the far side of the sphere. They'll become unstable. What? Well, look, here's the web page. We use a multi-phase auto-containment field now. It's meant to operate above 3%. Jordy? I remember a time when the old Enterprise was spiraling towards Psi 2000. A captain wanted to try a cold start of the warp engine. I told him that without a proper phase lock, it would take at least 30 minutes. You cannot change the laws of physics, I told him. He wouldn't believe me. So I had to come up with a whole new engine startup routine. He said, dude in 10. I'd love to explain everything to you, but the captain wants this spectrographic analysis done by 1,300 hours. I don't think you realize who you're talking to, Jordy. Scotty walked so you could run. Starfleet captains are like children. They want everything right now, but the secret is to give them only what they need, not what they want. Well, you didn't tell them how long it would really take, did you? Well, of course I did. Oh, laddie, <laughs> you've got a lot to learn if you want people to think of you as a miracle worker. I've tried to be patient, I've tried to be polite, but I've got a job to do here. And quite frankly, you're in the way. I was driving Starship while you're great-grandfather was still in diapers. I'd think you'd be a little grateful for some help. And more respectful. I'll leave you to work, Mr. LaForge. Oh, I did not like that. That knocked Jory down in my books a little bit. There you go, sir. What in blazes is this? Didn't you order scotch? I was drinking scotch a hundred years before you were born, and I can tell you that whatever this is, it is definitely not scotch. Captain Scott is unaware of the existence of synthahol. It is an alcohol substitute now being served aboard Starship. It simulates the appearance, taste, and smell of alcohol, but the intoxicating effects can be easily dismissed. Synthetic scotch, synthetic commanders. What is it? It is, it is, it is green. Please enter program. The android at the bar said you could show me my old ship. Please specify parameters. Show me the bridge of the Enterprise, you chattering piece of... Please specify by registry number. NCC1701. No bloody A, B, C. <laughs> this is exactly like my dad trying to talk to Google. Here's to you, lads. His whole identity I hope I'm not interrupting. was... I don't know what it is exactly, but I would be real careful. It's real. Aldebaran whiskey. Who do you think gave it to Guinan? Ah, this is your enterprise. I actually served on two. Yes, he did. To the enterprise and the stargazer. Old girlfriends will never meet again. What do you think of the enterprise, D? 
She's the beauty. When I was here, I could tell you the speed that we were traveling by the feel of the deck plates. But on your ship, I feel like I'm just in the way. I can't start out like a raw cadet. <laughs> I don't belong on your ship. I belong on this one. This is where I had a purpose. It's time I acted my age. Have we been able to access any of those records? We did try to download their memory core, but it was pretty heavily damaged in the crash. Perhaps Captain Scott could be of use. Well, he does know those systems better than any of us. I'll have Lieutenant Bartell beam down with him. Mr. LaForge. Please give some good advice to him. I would like you to accompany Captain Scott. You see, one of the most important things in a person's life is to feel useful. Now, Mr. Scott is a Starfleet officer. I would like him to feel useful again. I'll go with him, sir. And not be condescending. There's an antenna array approximately 400,000 kilometers south of our present position. Did you open the channel? No, sir, not from our present orbit. Prepare to put us in orbit above those coordinates. Captain Picard, to the bridge, please. Energize. Are you going back onto the Janolian? Some kind of tractor beam is locked onto us. We're being pulled inside. We're going in. This feels like a part one. Oh, few of us are over. Auxiliary power failing. Warp and impulse engine relays have been overloaded. I am attempting to compensate. Okay. So were they saying that it, people made this sphere? I thought it was like space made. I am reading a great deal of surface instability. It may be- Sir, the inertial motion from the tractor beams is still carrying us forward. Impulse engines are offline and I can't stop our momentum. We're falling directly into the star. And they're not on the ship. The primary computer database should be online now. Give it a try. Still nothing. But when they can build ships like your Enterprise, who'd want to pilot an old bucket like this? If this ship were operational, I bet she'd run circles around the Enterprise at impulse speeds. It's because something's old, doesn't mean you throw it away. You know, we used to have something called a dynamic mode converter. You wouldn't have something like that on your Enterprise, would you? I haven't seen anything like that in a long time, but I bet I might be able to come up with something similar. LaForge the Enterprise. LaForge the Enterprise, come in, please. Interference? No, they're gone. We will enter the sun's photosphere in three minutes. Uh... I've got 30% power. It won't be enough to stop. No, but it may be enough to turn us into orbit and hold our distance from the photosphere. Divert all power from the auxiliary relay systems to the maneuvering thrusters. We're in orbit, Captain. Our altitude is 150,000 kilometers. I'll see about getting main power back online. Very well. Whoa, that's close. I want to know who brought us in here and why. I sir. I feel like we're not acting like that was close enough to death. They could be inside the sphere. Whatever happened, we've got to find them. You know, if we could get these engines back online, we could track them with their impulse ion tree. The main drive assembly's shot. The inducers have melted. The power couplings are wrecked. We'd need a week just to get started. But we don't have a week with no sense in crying about it. Come on, we'll see what we can do with your power converter. Sensors show a large magnetic disturbance on the star's surface. The star has entered a period of increased activity. Sensors indicate that the solar flares will continue to grow. In three hours, our shields will no longer be sufficient to protect us, sir. He you knows who's going to save us. The engine should be coming back online about now. High fives. Hey, you were right. The auxiliary tank is holding. Take the bridge, Commander. You're the senior officer here. Never wanted to be anything else but an engineer. Begin scanning for another hatch or portal that might still be open. It will take seven hours to completely scan the surface, sir. Uh... It looks like some kind of doorway. I bet you two bottles of scotch that they're inside the sphere. It would take an impulse engine, full reverse, to put out a signature like that. So Which means going willingly. tractor beamed. Scotty. You call them Scotty. Hey. Those aren't communications arrays. What if they're access terminals which are triggered by subspace signals on certain frequencies? Frequencies like our standard ship's hail. Exactly. The Enterprise, when they saw that terminal, they probably did the same thing you did 75 years ago. Only this time, they triggered something that activated that hatch and pulled the ship inside the sphere. Maybe all we need to do is to get our foot in the door. We move in, and we use the Janolan to jam the hatch open, hoping that the Enterprise will escape. You can't be serious. I think he is. That hatch is huge. Geordi, the shields will hold. Don't worry about that. And I can get a few extra gigawatts out of these babies. <laughs> I'm telling you, as one engineer to another, I can do this. We built whale tanks on this ship, Geordi. 
gets our foot in the door. Punch it! That's it. Look how happy he is. There's an audio message from Commander LaForge. LaForge to Enterprise, do you read me? Go ahead, Commander, we read you. We're using the Janolan to hold open the hatch that you came through, but our shields aren't gonna hold out much longer. They gotta beam them up. The plasma intercooler's gone. Captain, we're not gonna be able to move this ship out of the way when you get here. You're gonna have to destroy it in order to escape. How much longer before we reach them? With impulse engines operating at 60% power, it will take one minute, 40 seconds. Prepare to beam two from the Janolan as soon as we're within range. Hurry, 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 hurry. Photon torpedoes armed and ready, sir. We are within transporter range. Bridge to transporter room. Energize. Should we make sure they energize first? That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, enjoy these times, Jordy. You're the chief engineer of a starship, and it's a time of your life that'll never come again. You're giving me one of your shuttles? Well, call it an extended loan. Since you lost your ship, saving ours, it seemed only fair. She's not much to look at. Every woman has her own <laughs> charm. You just have to know where to look for it. Scotty. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. <laughs> the Enterprise is in good hands. Oh, Scotty. He's such a good lad. You take care of yourself out there. Bye. This might be an emotional time of the month, but my goodness. <laughs> I think it's just that I don't like time passing. I don't want people to get old. My parents, my kids, myself. Don't think there's anything wrong with being old. It's just, like you said, enjoy this time. You'll never get it back. Oh, 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 Scotty. I've always loved Scotty. I'm happy with the way that wrapped up. I hope he can go find Spock and Kurt and Bones and they can have a little reunion. I'm sure they have been wondering where Scotty has been for 75 years. Oh, Jordy came around with Picard's nudge and wisdom, was able to recognize that Scotty did have great value and that we can learn and respect our elders. And, you know, even though they can seem silly, I mean, he, that's what Scotty said. They were changing our diapers. You know what I mean? That was a special crossover episode. It. I'm so glad you guys picked that one. Thank you. I'm sure many of you are like, oh, this is not the best one, but she'll love it. And you're right, I did. I loved seeing Scotty. He's just such a cheerful, sweet, brilliant man. And guys, I may or may not be heading to a Star Trek convention soon and i'm mostly going because william shatner is 93 years old and i know i'm not a true trekkie like a lot of you i have not seen every episode but i seriously just feel like i need to see him before it's too late and i don't know i <laughs> it's just sad you know like have you guys seen those tiktoks where they show like Kevin Costner in the like 90s and he's so young and then they like like transition and to now and part of it is like beautiful because aging is beautiful and wisdom and all that comes with it but part of it is also just like oh you wish you could freeze time sometimes okay thank you so much for watching along with me what a fun episode Let's watch Chain of Command. Here we go. We have rendezvoused with the starship Cairo near the Cardassian border. Cardassian, Cardassian. Why does that sound familiar? Come, Admiral, welcome on board. Thank you. That'll be all, Commander. I'm afraid there's no time for the usual pleasantries. I'm here to relieve you of command of the Enterprise. Excuse me? We're starting off with a fight? One does not relieve Jean-Luc Picard. They probably have a the good reason. Frontier. And it's just for a minute. Okay, explanation necessary right this second. They have mobilized three divisions of ground troops. We believe that they're preparing for an incursion into Federation space. Are the Cardassians ready for a war? I didn't say war, Commander. I said incursion. Our intelligence report suggests that they'll try to seize one of the disputed systems along the border. They're gambling that the Federation won't actually go to war over one system. I hope we won't need to make that decision. Where is Captain Picard? The captain, your chief medical officer and security chief have been reassigned. Excusez-moi. Captain Jellicoe helped 
helped to negotiate the original armistice two years ago, and I believe he's the most qualified person to lead this mission. The change of command will take place at 1300 hours. It's not necessary to give Captain Jellico command of the Enterprise just to conduct a negotiation. The Enterprise will be in a dangerous situation, and I want someone on the bridge who has a great deal of experience with the Cardassians. No offense, Commander, but that's not you. Okay, offense taken. What in the world? You were five seconds slower that time. It would be helpful to know something about our mission. I have my orders. I'm sure you understand that. I understand this is difficult. All I can do is ask you to trust me. All right, Mr. Wolf. I want you to time the doctor and me through that first tunnel. And this time, we're going to pick up those five seconds. Welcome aboard, sir. I'm Commander William G. G. Riker, class of 57, graduate eighth in this class. I'm looking forward to serving with you, Commander. I must admit, I missed the Cairo already. On a galaxy class ship, that's something special. Oh. Attention to orders! To Captain Jean-Luc Picard, commanding officer, USS Enterprise, you are hereby requested and required to relinquish command of your vessel to Captain Edward Jellico, commanding officer, USS Cairo, as of this date. Computer, transfer all command codes to Captain Edward Jellico. USS Enterprise, now under command of Captain Edward Jellico. <sighs> I relieve you, sir. I stand relieved. Our senior staff meeting? wonder how permanent this is going to be. They don't usually go through the ceremony if it's just a temporary assignment. How's your team shaping up? Very well, but I would prefer more recent intelligence on the exact layout. Well, maybe there's something we can do to help. We'll launch a Class 5 probe just before we reach the border. You can pick up the telemetry aboard the shuttle. Now, that will be extremely helpful. Okay, I do like that they're on the same page. I was actually going to talk to you about Delta Shift a little later, sir. Gamma Shift will be on duty when we arrive, and I will tell Lieutenant McDowell about the probe. Is there a problem with Delta Shift, Will? There is no Delta Shift yet, sir. They assure me it's going to cause us significant personnel problems. So you have not changed the watch rotation? I was going to explain this to you after the ceremony, sir. Tell the department heads that as of now, the Enterprise is on a four-shift rotation. I don't want to talk about it. Get it done. Now that means that Delta Shift will be due to come on duty in two hours. Oh, boy. Is that clear? Yes, sir. One of the finest officers that I have ever served with. Of course he is, Jean-Luc. Captain's log, star date 4635. Oh, I don't like this voice saying that. How long before we reach the rendezvous point? We will arrive in 51 hours, 32 minutes. Schedule four battle drills, one for each shift. Run a series of simulated attacks from a okay. Kardashian. Okay, okay. Get it done. Make it so. It's just a little bit nicer. I understand that he wants to be prepared, and I respect Power that. Power transfer levels need to be upgraded by 20%. The efficiency needs to be raised by at least 15%. We'll require realigning the warp coil and taking the secondary distribution grid offline. That's exactly what I want you to do. We're going to have to shut down exobiology, the astrophysics lab. We're not on a research mission. Get it done. Okay, dokie. Then you'd better get to it, Jordy. It looks like you have some work to do. Okay. And I believe in you, and this is all for the greater good and your protection. Should I be a starship captain? Or at least teach a class? <laughs> May I speak with you, Captain? Oh, Deanna, come in, come in. The latest masterpieces from my son. I'd like to go the duty roster with you. I'd be happy to. But first, I'd like to talk about how the change in command is affecting the crew. I've noticed some resistance. More like uncertainty. They knew him, and they knew what he expected. Now they're being asked to adjust to a new captain and a new way of doing things, and they're uncertain how to react. I see your point. This all could be very unsettling to them. And to you. And to me. Unfortunately, I don't have time for a honeymoon with the crew. You've clearly given this a lot of thought, so I'd like you to take charge of the morale situation. Please see to it that they make the adjustment to the new routine quickly and easily. I prefer a certain formality on the bridge. I'd appreciate it if you wore a standard uniform when you're on duty. Of course, sir. That seems like not important. You're all right, sir. Yes, I am. But the last time I had to train like this was for the Academy Marathon. I'm managing. I'm sorry I bothered you. Good night. Get that man an ice bath. Well, the Enterprise will be monitoring your channel just in case you do need to transmit a signal. We've arrived at the shuttle departure coordinate. You can see why he's still only a first officer. Captain, I would just like you to know that Commander Riker... I've read your report, Jean-Luc. I know you think highly of him. He's been decorated by Starfleet Command five times. I think... If you just gave him a chance, you would find him an outstanding officer. Let's be candid for a moment. Let's... The Cardassians aren't going to listen to reason, and the Federation isn't going to give in to their demands. And the chances are you won't be coming back from this mission of yours. Excuse? And forgive me for being blunt, but the Enterprise is mine now. 
Here's hoping you beat the odds. Good hunting. Thank you. I just wish she could appreciate that he's the new guy here, and that the crew probably has a lot of valuable information. Shuttlecraft payment to Enterprise. We have cleared the shuttle bay. They look good in Ninja Black. Starfleet Intelligence believes that the Cardassians are developing a metagenic weapon. Oh my god. I am not familiar with metagenics. They're genetically engineered viruses that are designed to destroy entire ecosystems. Starfleet Intelligence believes that the Cardassians are developing a new delivery system, one that would protect them from accidental exposure to the toxin. They believe that the Cardassians are testing a way of launching dormant metagenic Whoa. material. So they could activate the toxins after the launch, thereby preventing any accidental exposure. These emissions may indicate that a metagenic delivery system is in operation. What do we know about Sultras 3? It was thought to be uninhabited until these emissions were detected. Starfleet believes that the Cardassians may have a secret research lab located somewhere below the planet's surface. Our orders are to penetrate this Celtis 3 installation and determine if the Cardassians are actually building a metagenic weapon. And if they are? Destroy it at any cost. Sultras 3 is in Cardassian space. How will we get there undetected? I know a way of acquiring some discreet transport. That was a lot of information. Can I just say every single time they say Cardassian, I think of Kardashian. <laughs> And so it just is like, the Kardashians are doing this, the Kardashian. I think I remember this guy. I didn't do it. I'm not accusing you of anything. What do you want then? We're looking for Damon Solok. We have a business proposition to discuss. Solok is a very busy, very important man. He isn't here. But I could relay a message. Please, will you tell Damon Solok Damon that we are Solok. interested in transportation to Seltris? Kardashian planet. Uh -huh. We understand that Damon Solok runs cargo there from time to time. Solok is no smuggler. But if Solok were to go to Seltris 3 for legitimate reasons, we would be interested in quietly booking passage for the journey. I don't think he would be interested in dealing Federation spies. I heard that Solok was quite a man. Why, yes. <laughs> Extraordinary man. Oh, Crusher. Sola could help us. I guess there's some things even Sola can't do. Turning it on when she needs to. If he could, I would be very, very, yes, grateful. When do you want to leave? <laughs> Morph space. <laughs> what about the updated schematics from Jello? But I'm picking up some subspace signals. You have to compress the detection bandwidth in order to determine the fix. The source emission is 500 meters east of here and 700 meters below. They're called liners, kind of sell trend bat, they're harmless. Why'd it have to be bats? Golemek has arrived. He's waiting for you in the observation lounge. Captain I, I think there's been a slight miscommunication. Did you want to meet with Gun Lamec in here? The observation lounge is appropriate. Lamec is a Cardassian, and Cardassians are like timber wolves, predators. Bold in large numbers, cautious by themselves, and with an instinctive need to establish a dominant position in any social gathering. Sounds just like the real Cardassians. <laughs> Sometimes in the fight for dominance, one of them ends up dead. The floor is over 500 meters down from here. There doesn't seem to be a way around. We'll have to repel from here. We'll have to use fusing pitons. Ah, remember to control your descent. You'll get the lines tangled. What is going on? I've been waiting here for over I'm an Captain hour. Captain Jellicoe. This treatment is a deliberate insult to the Cardassian Union. I have come to negotiate a Federation withdrawal from the borders, not to be dictated to by some mere captain. If the Cardassian Union truly wishes to discuss peace, they can send someone who can negotiate in a civilized manner. Captain on the bridge. Let him stew for a few minutes, then go in and tell him that you've convinced me to meet with him one more time. Tell him I'm a loose cannon and that he needs to be more reasonable because I'm such an unreasonable man. And then give grudging permission for two aides. No more. He's sure of himself. That's very no, true. He's not. Okay. <laughs> the installation should be about 300 meters. I like this mission. This way. Lava tube beyond here that runs for 75 meters and it connects with a, another chamber. We need to get through here.
Back to the negotiations. I feel like this Kardashian is not going to take this well. May I present my aides, Glenn Korak and Glenn Tejo. For the past three weeks, you've been massing troops in staging areas, assembling strike forces and pulling ships from their normal patrol. We will not stand for this clearly provocative behavior. We are conducting routine training operations, nothing more. Then I'm sure you won't mind if we send a few starships into this sector for our own training operations. However, we are very concerned with your refusal to vacate those territories along the border which are Cardassian. You gave up your claims on those territories when you signed the armistice. Okay. We should listen to them. Golomek, as you know, the systems are still under negotiation by the terms of the treaty. Negotiations which we have pursued in good faith. Unfortunately, the Federation has not been as forthcoming. What so to speed up mean? the process, you are preparing for war. We are preparing to defend ourselves. The Federation will not start a war. I have heard reports that a small team from the Federation has already been sent into our territory. Of course, I don't believe it. Such an attempt would almost certainly fail. And even if it succeeded, it would trigger a very, oh, very serious scary. response on our part. Hopefully this isn't all a ploy to start a war. Like, they pretend that they have medical genics and then they send in this team and they're like, Oh, you sent in this team. I'm going to start a war. Well, I hope his new assignment is not too dangerous. It would be a shame if something were to happen to such a, uh, such a noted officer. Oh, did not like that. Okay. The Cardassians are not part of the Federation, but they're not like enemies. They have a treaty. Okay, okay, okay. But let's not get too political with Star Trek politics. three proximity sensors around it. I don't know if that went well, those negotiations. I just feel like if we're going to negotiate, Picard is like the most... But the false image will only last a few minutes. Everyone, no one can talk to him and not just be like, you're right. <laughs> Remember, aim low, fire in short control bursts. There's no one here. There's no lab. It is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Come on. Hey, it's exactly like I predicted. <laughs> Mr. Wharf. Oh, what? The captain. No. There are five more of them heading this way from another tunnel. I'm not sure. We're picking up a lot of coded messages from a Cardassian planet near the border. Those emissions you were so concerned about have just stopped. I'd say one way or another, our friends have finished their task. Have you heard from our friends? No. Let me know if you do. I'd very much like to see them again. A challenge. Why is it always him they want to capture? You should prove an interesting challenge. Possibly the most interesting to come through that door in many years. So you concocted an elaborate ruse to bring me here. In this room, you do not ask questions. Okay. If I am not satisfied with your answers, you will die. This guy's on a power trip if I ever saw one. They love a good to be continued. That was quite the episode. Change of command, new H-Core captain, secret mission, a trap, a new lizard people. Oh my gosh. I'm dying to continue, but it's almost one o'clock in the morning. It's gonna have to wait. Or is it? It is. I can't. I'm confident it's gonna be okay, but I just gotta see how we get there. And I really want the new captain to like Will as much as we do and to appreciate him. I just, I'm sure the crew on the Cairo loves him in his own way and he has strengths but once you've been with Kirk and then Picard it's just hard to see any other one <laughs> run our enterprise that was a really fun exciting episode and I seriously can't wait to see the end okay thanks guys your place of birth the bar France is ready keep the serum at that level truth serum what is your mission on Seltus III? To seek and destroy a metagenic weapon. How many others were part of this mission? Two. 
What are the Federation's defense plans for Minos Corva? I don't know. Increase the level slightly to 0.31. Let's begin again, shall we? Name? Picard. Does he actually know the plans? I feel like they're being hush-hush about a lot of things. Okay. Worf and, and Beverly are going to beam back. Then there'll be a mission to rescue JLP. Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Lieutenant War, and Dr. Beverly Crusher landed on Seltris Three, attacked one of our outposts in a brutal assault, and killed over 55 men, women, and children. Uh... We have Captain Picard. The Cardassian Union has yet to decide how it will respond to this latest provocation. Oh, you are a little slimy assured, lizard weasels. We will respond. You set it all up. If they did escape, they'll head for the Lycian system. The Enterprise is supposed to meet them there in eight hours. I want you to take a shuttlecraft and head for the rendezvous point. The Enterprise will have to remain here until the end game with Goldemek is played out. What happens to impoverished society? The tombs were plundered, priceless treasures stolen, and those were eventually sold in order to pay for our war efforts. That war costs you hundreds of thousands of lives. It depleted your food supplies, left your population weakened and miserable. Let's not waste time arguing about issues we cannot resolve. You have been apprehended invading one of our secret facilities. The least that will happen is for you to stand trial. I'm offering you the opportunity for that experience to be civilized. You've injected me with drugs. Surely you must realize that I've already answered truthfully every question you've put to me. We have gone to great lengths to lure you here. You think? Because we know that in the event of an invasion, the Enterprise will be the command ship for the sector encompassing Minos Corp. Wasted energy, Captain. Torture is expressly forbidden under the terms of the Soldonis Four Convention governing the treatment of prisoners of war. Uh, what would that be? Don't you touch him. From this point on, you will enjoy no privilege of rank, no privileges of person. From now on, I will refer to you only as human. You have no other identity. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh my gosh. Captain Picard's fate is still unknown. We gotta hurry, guys. There is no chance to go back for the captain. What's the plan? Jericho. I want Jordy to analyze the readings from Beverly's tricorder. Request permission to begin planning a rescue operation. We don't even know if he's still alive. Shouldn't we assume that he is alive until it's been proved yes. otherwise? We cannot just abandon him. He's yes. gone. I'm sorry, Will, but you're gonna have to accept that. He's not, actually. Your mother's foolhardy. Come on! I want those tricorder readings analyzed by 1,400 hours. Uh, we gotta go higher rank, Will. Yes, sir. Thirsty? I would imagine, sir. It's time to move on. I told you all that I know. How many lights do you see there? I see four lights. No, there are five. There are four lights. Perhaps you're aware of the incision in your chest. While you were under the influence of our drugs, you were implanted with a small device. It's a remarkable invention. Don't By you freaking dare. By entering commands in this pad, I can produce pain in any part of your body. Various levels of severity. Forgive me. I don't enjoy this, but I must demonstrate. It will make everything clearer. <laughs> Most people feel at first they can't steel themselves against it, but they're completely unprepared for the intensity of the pain. I know nothing about Minos Corva. But I've told you that I believe you. I didn't what? ask you about Minos Corva. I asked how many lights you see. There are four lights. I don't understand how you can be so mistaken. <laughs> Will, go to the Federation. Special operations on Seltry 3. Do you have anything to say? Captain Picard was not acting under my orders. And if we wish to execute him? Under the terms of the Solanus Convention, Captain Picard... The Solanus Convention applies to prisoners of war. Which means you would have to acknowledge that he was captured during a mission authorized by the Federation. There is, of course, an alternative. If the Federation agreed to a complete and immediate withdrawal from this sector, then we would be disposed to release Captain Picard and forget about this incident. I'll have to discuss this with my superiors. You have seven hours. That's too long. 
That's too long. He's being tortured. I'm not suggesting you trade an entire star system for one man's life. But you've got to acknowledge that these were Federation orders and that he is a prisoner of war. He will have the protection of the Solanus Convention. That would play right into Golomek's hand. I can't believe you're willing to sacrifice Captain Picard's life as a negotiation tactic. Will, are you questioning my judgment, Commander? Yes. As First Officer, it is my responsibility to point out any mistakes. But you're relieved. I take back Sir. everything I said about him being loved by his own ship. You can go right back to your own ship. The metagenic weapon they were supposedly developing used a Theta Band subspace delivery system. Yes. Captain Picard is one of only three Starfleet captains with extensive experience in Theta Band devices. Maybe they were interested in something that he did in the past. The Cardassians may be planning an attack somewhere in this sector. And they're torturing the information out of him. Do humans have mothers and fathers? Yes, but human mothers and fathers don't love their children as we do. They're not the same as we are. You let her come in here. Me too. Why? To expose a child to... Torture? Yes. Seeing him torture to a human? Someone who is suffering to see that it is you that inflict that suffering. From the time Jill Aura could crawl, she's been taught about the enemies of the Cardassians and that enemies deserve their fate. When children learn to devalue others, they can devalue anyone, including their parents. What do you know of Cardassian history? I know that once you were a peaceful people with a rich spiritual life. Since the military took over, hundreds of thousands more have died. But we are feeding the people. We acquired territory during the wars. We developed new resources. We no initiated weapons. a rebuilding program. That is what the military has done for Cardassia. My daughter will never worry about going hungry. Her belly may be full, but her spirit will be empty. He's gonna hit him. Yep, yep, yep. Hit him back, Picard. Shall we begin again? How many lights are there? Why? What lights? <laughs> Is there a Federation system near the McAllister Nebula that might interest the Cardassians? Minos Corva is just 11 light years from the Nebula, and the Cardassians tried to annex it during the war. Minos Tirith. Data, I want to be at Minos Corva in one hour. Is Data number one now? I must congratulate you. You're remarkably strong will. He doesn't know. I you injected no him with in truth serum. Further, you may go. Someone will give you clean clothing before we return you to your ship. It's trap. We will get what we need from the human female. What female are you referring to? The human who was part of your abortive assault team, of course, Dr. Beverly Crusher. What have you done to her? Not a thing. I wanted to finish my interviews with you before I interrogated her. I had hoped it might not be necessary. Lieutenant Worf. We had to kill him. Dr. Crusher has no knowledge of any Starfleet operations. She's a medical officer. Are you choosing to stay with me? Excellent. I can't tell you how pleased that makes me. I'm convinced that their invasion fleet is hiding in the McAllister Nebula. I intend to hit it before they leave it. What if the Cardassians are in that nebula to conduct scientific research? How this long guy doesn't the have an empathetic ship ship stay in, his in the nebula? Body. In 17 hours, their hull degradation will reach dangerous levels. Prepare a series of 500 antimatter mines with magnetic targeting capabilities. We're going to need a shuttle, specially outfitted to operate in the nebula by 1,400 hours. You'll need to have sick bay ready for the casualties you're about to send me. Oh, you're awake. Have something to eat. I insist. Boiled Taspani. It's a delicacy I'm happy to share with you. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, 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 oh. We were thin, scrawny little animals, constantly hungry, always cold. Once I found a nest, Taspas had mated and built a nest in the eve of a burnt out building. I found three eggs in it. It was like finding treasure. Must be rewarding to you to, to repay others for all those years of misery. Torture has never been a reliable means of extracting information. Ultimately self-defeating as a means of control. One wonders that it's still practiced. I fail to see where this analysis is leading. Look at you now. I won't see a powerful Cardassian warrior. I will see a six-year-old boy who is powerless to protect himself. Be quiet. Gets off on hurting others. In spite of all you've done to me, I find you a pitiable man. I'll turn this on and leave you in agony all night. There are four lights. Get him. There are five lights. Six years old. You cannot hurt me. Damn it, Leon. 
career as a shuttle pilot, from Jupiter to Saturn and back, once a day, every day. Is that right? I was on that run myself for a while. Then you must have done Titan's turn. Oh, yeah. We're wasting time. You know, this trip into the nebula is going to need someone who can do Titan's turn in their sleep. These mines need to be laid within two kilometers of the Cardassian ships, but the particle flux from the nebula will blind every sensor except for this proximity detector. You're going to need one heck of a pilot to pull that off. Is that you? But truthfully, the man you want is Commander Riker. I don't know if that's Jordy throwing Riker a bone or... He really does want it to be the most success. I think you're insubordinate, arrogant, willful, and I don't think you're a particularly good first officer. But you are also the best pilot on the ship. Now that the ranks are dropped, Captain, I don't like you either. You are arrogant, arrogant. and closed-minded. You need to control everything and everyone. You don't provide an atmosphere of trust, and you don't inspire these people to go out of their way for you. You've got everybody wound up so tight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's no joy in anything. I don't think you're a particularly good captain. You don't inspire respect. You don't inspire hope. You don't inspire kindness. Here. Will you pilot the shuttle, Commander? Yes. You're welcome. Oh, I'm glad somebody said it, though. Sensors inoperative. Right on schedule. Proximity detector is working. We should be able to read their ships at a distance of 500 meters. Don't make this too easy. Get ready to deploy the mines. Captain, the shuttle is emerging from the nebula. Were you successful, Commander? Aye, sir. The mines are laid. Permission to go get my captain. This is Cardassian territory, Captain. Every one of your ships has a mine on its belly, my finger's on the button, and you're in a very bad position. Set off Alpha 4-2. Aye, sir. That was just a baby. The big boys are sitting on your hull. What are your terms? Ships will leave the nebula one by one. Each ship will eject its primary phaser coil before setting course for the nearest Cardassian base. Prepare to detonate. I will agree to your terms. Oh, and one more thing. I understand you're holding a Starfleet officer named Jean-Luc Picard. I expect him returned immediately. Destroy it. That won't help. I have many more. Enjoy your good feelings while you can. There may not be many more of them. I've just received word. There's been a battle. The Enterprise is burning in space. You freaking, freaking liar. Our troops were successful in spite of your refusal to help me. The word will be that you perished with your crew. No one will ever know that you are here with us, as you will be for a long, Ooh. long time. Come on, let's try to you take them. You do, however, have a choice. You can live out your life in misery, held here, or you can live in comfort with good food and warm clothing, women as you desire them, allowed to pursue your studies of philosophy and history. A life of ease, of reflection, and intellectual challenge. Or this. What must I do? Nothing, really. Tell me how many lights you see. I, what's the harm? I know it's like you're... How many lights? The guards are coming. Don't be a stubborn fool. How many? You told me he would be ready to go. We had some unfinished business. A ship is waiting to take him back to the Enterprise. If you'll go with the guards, they'll take care of you. He wanted to break him just because he wanted to. He does get off on torture. Four lights! We can't break him. Welcome home, Jean-Luc. Get out of here. Just the way you left it. Maybe a little better. I relieve you, sir. I stand relieved. It's been an honor serving with you. I don't know where to begin. I read your report. What I didn't put in the report was that at the end, he gave me a choice between a life of comfort or more torture. All I had to do was to say that I could see five lights when in fact there were only four. You didn't say it? No. I believed that I could see five lights. Oh, I'm so glad everything's right as it should be, but poor Picard, he's been through so much. He's been turned into a Borg and mind controlled and he, he got, he lived an entire life and got taken away. Whoa, another big episode and a great conclusion. That was like, went deep for Star Trek, you know? Like not saying that not, normally they are but like getting into like torture and like mind control and oh i love jean-luc picard so much he's my best friend um like i said all is how it should be but like he has been through so much he needs to have a daily counselor troy session i'm glad jericho was 
freaking out of there. I mean, uh, he was successful, so you gotta give him that, but I just really did not like his style of leadership. I was very entertained by those two episodes. It was like a mini movie. It had action, suspense, and like this watching Picard go through that was just, whew. Anyways, um, I really, really enjoyed those. Thank you so much for choosing them. I'll see you next time. I've got three more episodes this season. No, two more. Two more episodes plus the season finale. Okay, thanks. <laughs>